But when we come together and praise, there's something about the Holy Spirit and how it starts revealing things to your mind even right now. That's why it says do not forsake the assembly together. Amen. Especially as you see that they approach you. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. There's some that do, man. I'm going to tell you, we don't understand what we're missing out on in the things of God. Not out of legalism. You know, people try to make laws. Don't come to church here. Just step on out and get out of here then. You know, you ain't right with God. I don't mean you're out of the kingdom of God. But you are missing out. You're missing out on the banquet. Because he says, come and die. He set 5,000 down and more than that, counting women and children, didn't he? And he started feeding them. All of them were following him and he started feeding them, praise God, that heavenly manner. Woo, with two fishes and five boats, he multiplied it. Mm -hmm. He's taking this word right now and he's feeding your spirit. It's, it's funny when someone says we're having a fish fry, we're going to have a, have a, uh, a get together and, and, and we're going to have plenty of food, barbecue chicken. Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Will you show up at 7 o'clock? We'll be there at 6. <laughs> food ready? <laughs> well, the food's ready. The food is ready. Amen. He said, I bought a piece of ground, a pretty happy excuse, verse 19, and another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray you have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife. Got some looking for a wife, looking for a husband. Now, I done married a wife. I ain't got time for you now, Lord. I done married somebody. They done became more important than you. This land became more important than you. My way has become more important than your ways. Y'all see what they're saying? Don't you know it breaks his heart? Man, I read this. I'm telling you, man, tears well my eyes. And I don't cry. I'm one of them hard shell. You know, macho wisdom kind of does. He didn't break your heart when you're preaching the old thing. You start crying. You, man, don't, don't cry to him. Someone walks in the room, you're like, man, come on, man, that's not a I cut the grass yesterday. <laughs> My eyes are burning. That's what's wrong. But it breaks your heart. And Almighty God loves us so much. And he's made this wedding feast and he's made this dinner and we, we make light of it. And we're humans and he understands that. That's why he gave them another chance and another chance. He's given us another chance. He's given us another chance this morning to say, look, let me dedicate my life to you, Lord. Forgive me. Forgive me for making light of what you've done for me. Because my, this one said that I bought five yoke of oxen. But let me give an example. You hold your finger there. We might make this a series, so don't be scared. I can come back. Go with me to 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 19. Because there was another man who had a yoke of oxen. And when the invitation came to him, I, I, let's just see how he handled it. His name was Elijah. And he had a yoke of oxen he was working with too, wasn't he? 1 Kings 19, verse 19. 19, 19. It's amazing how the Lord can show up and speak to us through His Word. And He's so gentle. He's a teacher. He desires to teach us understanding. His apostles followed Him. For three solid years, they ate with Him. They slept in the same area. They followed Him day and night. Verse 19, so he departed this and found Elijah. This is Elijah being told to go find Elisha and give him the invitation. His calling. You know each of you has a calling? He knew you before you ever entered your mother's womb. Jeremiah 1.5. He knew you. You were with him before you were here. You were with him before we took on this earth suit. And he said, I've called you. I've called you throughout eternity. But I've given you free will. And your free will, you can go your own way like they did back there. You can go your own way or you can go his way. Well, here's Elijah and he's working for him. The son of Sephat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. There's the oxen. So he had a business. Like this man said, I done bought some oxen. Let me go prove them. I got to go to my business. I got to go to work. So he's sitting there plowing with what? He got 12 yoke of oxen before him and he with 12, the 12. 
And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. Boom. Here's your calling. Just like right now, this mantle right here, the Word of God is coming forth and telling you, Jesus wants you to dedicate your life to Him, to surrender all. He's got something for you to do, and He's going to give you a abundant life to do it. He's going to fill you with the Spirit. He's going to save your soul first, fill you with the Spirit, and He's going to give you this calling. And the invitation, which is, by the way, is the name of the sermon, which I forgot to mention. <laughs> the invitation is coming forth to all of us. All of us in this generation right now. It's been coming forth for 2,000 years through the gospel of Jesus Christ. But right now, it falls. the mantle falls on who? You and me. And we're working. Many people are still working, even in religion, trying to work to get in relationship with God. i got to have my hair down here. i got to wear a skirt down to here. I can't watch this. I've well, got to be over here. I've got to do this right here. I've got to do that so I can enter into a relationship. I'm going to work with these oxen to try to enter into a relationship with God. And he's saying, look, I'm giving you a mantle because I prepared everything through my son. And all you have to do is believe upon him Amen. for me to speak to you and have communion to save your soul. Amen. That's the gospel. He throws that metal on me right now. That metal on me right now. And he says, and he left the oxen. Wait a minute. He didn't have no excuse, did he? Mm -hmm. It says, Elijah, he left the oxen and ran after Elijah. Now, at this type, Elijah is the type of shadow of Christ right here. Do we leave our old way, old habits, and our lifestyle, just surrender all and follow Jesus? Mm -hmm. He's not going to take you out of your home or he. Most of the time, anyway. He's not talking about giving up your home and everything else. He's talking about your heart. Where is your heart? It's not the material things that he's worried about. It's your heart. Have you surrendered your whole heart or does something else have your heart other than Christ? That's what keeps you in bondage. Y'all know what I'm saying? Yes. And we see Elijah said, Oh yeah, I'm going to do this thing. My goodness, what did he do? He, he ran after Elijah. And said, let me, I pray you, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said unto him, go back again, for what have I done to you? And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen. That's his job. That's where he was working with. And gave them to the people, and they did eat. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. Did you see that? He ministered unto Elijah, the prophet of God, who threw his mantle on Elijah. Now, Elijah didn't know anything about ministry, but he still ministered to Elijah. That means he followed him. That means he listened to him. That means he came. He was faithful. Amen. He was a faithful servant. We minister to Christ. Almighty God, when we surrender our lives to Him, it overjoys His soul and ministers to Him. Did you know that? We minister to Him when we use the gifts that He's given us. And we let Him go back into heaven as we worship with the gifts that He's given us. We minister to Christ. 